All right, guys, welcome back. You know exactly where I'm standing if you've been here before, and if you haven't, well, welcome aboard. I am standing underneath my relatively new sawmill shed slash shelter slash shack, as I like to call it. I've got something ahead of me today, and I'm glad you guys are all here to join me. What that is is a little bit of maintenance. Now, the maintenance I'm talking about involves my 2017 Woodland Mills HM130. This thing has cut a lot of wood, but just like with any tool, it requires maintenance from time to time. That's the task at hand today. The maintenance involves sort of the three B's, and that is a belt, a blade, and a bearing. We're going to replace that today using Woodland Mills Parts Kit. And there's the parts kit we're using. It got a little ripped up on the way in here, but that's the one we're using here. And uh, just before we get to that, I think what I'll do, I'll just sort of duck outside and refresh your memory as to what we've been up against over the last, well, the last while. Starting off with the sawmill shed, you guys can see this has been the main project. I have come a long ways from the old sawmill shack, as I like to call it. And uh, we're now at this place. We're at the, uh, well, sort of like a palace more than the shack, if you ask me. We've also gone ahead and we've newly constructed this right behind me. This is the lumber shed. I don't know exactly how much lumber this is going to hold. I'm hoping somewhere in the neighborhood of 1,000 to 1,500 board feet. Time will tell. This is waiting to get some lumber in it, and that's why we're doing the maintenance today. Aside from this lumber shed, or shack as I like to often say, I've also built this. This is sort of like the runway. I'm going to call it the boardwalk for now. This is here sort of as a trial just to make my life just a little bit easier so that when I'm taking lumber that I cut right there, I don't have to step down, as you can see, onto the snowy ground or mucky ground in the summer. I can just step onto the boardwalk and strut my stuff right across to the lumber shack. Whether that, uh, you know, stands the test of time and whether I enjoy using it and makes my life more more easy, I guess, will uh, we'll be seen. But if it does, great. If it doesn't, well, you'll see me taking it apart. All right, so as I mentioned, we're doing a blade, a belt, and a bearing today. Where I'm getting the majority of the parts from, aside from the uh, blades behind me, is from this. This is the Woodland Mills Spare Parts Kit, and this, uh, I know it says 126, whatever, whatever, but this does fit the 130, HM130. Now keep in mind, this is a 2017 model. If you're getting a spare parts kit and you have a newer model, I guess even if you have an older model, just check with Woodland Mills to make sure they get you set up just right. So I'm gonna go ahead and start by loosening off the engine mounts for the, uh, for the sawmill. That'll allow me to slacken up this belt here that is going to be the belt that we replace this will be the bearing that i replace and the belt obviously is not here by belt i mean blade is not here it is sitting over here over here i've got three lennox blades these blades are sold by woodland mills as well and that's where i've bought them uh, i sharpen my own blades now and i also set the teeth you guys can check that out in other videos these are razor sharp in my opinion and they're ready to go. So once I get the new belt on, once I get the new bearing replaced, I'll take one of these off the rack and we'll sling her in place. So let's get set up and get that engine loosened up. Kind of a finicky tool here. I don't think I like it that much, but uh, what are you gonna do? That's all I have out here. Anyways, on to the front. You guys can see with the doors open here, what happens when you're cutting in the winter time. Stuff like this, you see the sawdust? It's, uh, it's actually relatively dry compared to what I thought, but uh, what'll happen is this will get some moisture into it and ultimately it'll freeze in here. So you really got to get in here and get that cleaned out before you create a bit of a headache for yourself. Anyways, you can see here, it gets all gummed on there. Just got to clean all that, clean all that junk off. And that usually is frozen on here and you can see it up in here and a little pile there, just froze on there. 
same thing you guys can see that anyways what we're doing is this belt is about to come off it's quite a bit more slack now that i've loosened off the engine mounts you got to loosen it off unless you're going to like cut it off in order to take it off properly and especially to put the new one on so that's uh that's what i'm going to do uh one way that i actually was able to tell that this bearing here on this band wheel needed replacing was the sound so as you as you cut a lot with these sawmills you'll start to develop uh sort of a sense of what it should sound like, what the engine should sound like, what the cutting should sound like. And when it starts to sound a little bit different, you know, pay attention to that. That was my indicator that um, this bearing was going. Not particularly that bearing, but I knew something in here was off. So I had to look around and uh, this bearing ended up being what it was. So first thing I'm doing here is just gonna push the engine all the way over. Remember the engine mounts are loose, uh, as is the tensioner bolt or tensioner nut. You guys saw me loosen off. Uh, so I'm just gonna push the engine over and you saw it move over just a little bit there. If it needs to go over further, um, you'll know. If you can't get that belt off, it means it needs to be looser. But it looks like the belt's going to pop right off here. So we'll get that off. All right. And uh, you guys can see there's the top of the belt. Uh, nothing out of the ordinary there. But on the underside, you guys see all that splitting? See the splitting between all the valleys? See the, see the splits? So eventually this would have probably broken. Another way you can tell if it's time to change this belt <clears throat> is if when this is sitting on the band wheel, so let's just pretend at the top it's sitting on the band wheel as it should. You, this belt should be sitting above the cast iron band wheel. If it's not sitting above that cast iron band wheel, your blade is going to be riding right on the metal. And then ultimately that's no good because your belt or your, uh, your blade's going to fly off. So Take your finger and just run it along the top. If you can almost feel the metal above that belt, well, your days are probably numbered for this belt. So get it replaced. All right, so that's just about junk. Uh, you can go ahead and just check everything else. Make sure it's tight. You don't want any side to side rocking. This one, watch this. You see that? See all that motion there? You can also spin it. I don't know if we'll hear anything. Not really. Uh, when it was at full full rev, meaning the blade was was on it and we were moving, I could actually hear a squealing here, and so that uh, that was my indicator as well. Anyways, let's take this off. The one thing I'm going to point out to you guys, I have actually never replaced this bearing. So this is a 2017 model. I cut a lot of wood. I've replaced the belt, but I've never replaced this bearing, so we are probably due. And with that in mind, I've never taken this off, so this, this might be interesting. Okay, this will be a bit of a struggle. Well, I had to get the pulley puller here, or the sprocket puller, or whatever you guys want to call it. This is on there pretty good, which uh, <clears throat> you guys can imagine. It's been on here for three years. There we go. Okay, that thing right there is worth its weight in gold at this point, so... Uh, yeah, there we go. We got the cast iron band wheel and that's got a bit of girth to it. We'll go ahead and take the bearings out. We got two to take out. And uh, first off, I'll show you what comes in the parts kit if you plan on doing this yourself. So let's go have a look at it. <clears throat> that was a bit of an ordeal there. Not too bad. Unless you know what to expect or don't know what to expect, I mean. Um, here we go. So here's the spare parts kit. Uh, I just put a piece of tape on it because this sort of got ripped off of my snowmobile ride out here. If you guys were to open it up, here's exactly what you are getting. And I just had a quick look in this a moment ago, but this is uh, exactly how it's packaged when it comes. So you guys can see there, you got some blade guide uh, pieces there and some hardware. And my bearings are in here. There's a whole bunch of bearings of different sizes. They're packaged up nicely. And of course you got the two main belts here. This one on the drive wheel or the uh, Sorry, the uh, idler wheel. <clears throat> and this uh, drive belt, as you can see, is a beautiful replacement for the one that I took off a moment ago. And it's got the size on there and all that. 
what's that say? BX79 Tri Power Belt. There you go. Okay, well, let's get those installed and go from there. Okay, here goes. So let's have a look at what bearings we need to start with. Look at these big boys here. I know our, I just opened one, that's why the box is open. There they are there. As you can tell they're pretty hefty. So uh got two of those to go in. And then we'll see what we can do. I don't have the special snap ring uh, pliers. I just tend to use my smallest needle nose. But we'll see if we're getting that out of there. This might be a bit of a task. If I had the right tool, life would be a lot easier. I'm sure a lot of people say that all the time. There we go. Okay. And the other bearings in here. And it's probably gonna take a little bit of work to get that out because it's been in there so long. Just gonna have a look at the back. You guys can see all the debris there. Okay, I'm going to give this a little taparoo with a hammer. And uh, I'm just taking uh, a nail because I don't have any other tools handy. And keep in mind these bearings are being replaced. I would never do this with a new nail but i'm just going to take the lip of that nail and place it on the other edge of the bearing and i should be able to knock that down just grab my little hammer here at least i think so i'd have to use the other end Okay, that one's loose. I think I got the other one loosened up. As you guys can tell, there's a whole bunch of rust in there. I've almost got it off here. Let's see if we can just pry it out. <clears throat> Don't laugh, I'm using what I have here. And what I have is this old nail. Keep in mind, this is a failed bearing. Okay, there it goes. That was in there solid. Okay, I don't know if you guys can see that. You guys see that? Probably not, but watch this. Ta-da! Got lights in here. Anyways, that was in there pretty good. It just happened to be uh, just happened to be uh, stuck in there with a little film of rust. They both tend to come out the front. Uh, well, they have to come out the front. On the back, there's a uh, there's a lip here. So don't try to hammer it backwards or you'll really screw this thing up. So we're going to flip her over, try to push this one through the same way the other one came through. And it uh, didn't come out that easy, the first one. And obviously, if you don't have uh, hammer control, you probably shouldn't do this because you'll bung up the sides there and that's no good. So let's see how we're making out. It's coming. Yeah, it's coming. Okay, here we go. Let's see what the culprit was. That one's okay. That's the one right there. So that's the bad bearing. So we're gonna replace both of them, obviously. And uh, then we'll put it back on. Okay, I just took the bearing out of the package here. And if you're interested in the number, let me just wipe off some of the grease there. You guys can see it there. You guys see that number? Made by SKF, whatever that is. All right, so I'm gonna push these bearings back in and I don't have any special tool to put this in with. You might, I don't. And so I'm going to try to get it situated as best I can. Okay. Make sure it's bottomed out of the back. 
Looks good to me. And we'll do the same, and this is the exact same as the other one. I hope. Yeah, it is. Okay. All right, so that one is just going to go in far enough so that we can get the spanner clip here. Spanner clip? Yeah, I think so. Okay, here we go. And that is what we want. And just before I put the bearings in, I just went ahead and uh, I made sure there was no... Uh, no rust in there, so I just cleaned it out just a little bit and uh, the bearings are all brand new and so we're ready to put this back on. One thing we got to do before we put that band wheel on is just admire these beautiful lights out here. This is an addition I made to the sawmill shelter quite early on and this has really been uh, quite nice, especially this time of year in the winter. The daylight hours are quite short, so this allows me to stay out here and keep working. And it's nothing more than simply some LED lights. You guys see them there? They work pretty well. I just have it hooked up to a 12 volt battery. If you haven't been here before, I keep the 12 volt battery down below here. It's hooked up to a charging system. See it right there. And if you have a look outside and well, maybe you can see it, maybe you can't. Let's just look way up there. You guys can see way up in the tree, right about where my finger is, there's a, uh, there's a solar panel there. So that's what's charging this battery. Oh, down here. That's what's charging this battery when I'm not here. And it's all hooked up to the switch here. So we can turn the lights on and off. Pretty slick if you ask me. Anyways, back to the band wheel. So probably the easiest thing to do at this point, it is pretty it is pretty snug to go on, which you would expect. If you have this exact same bolt, the one that comes on the band wheel, if you have this bolt but longer, you can simply thread it in and then tighten it. Once it threads all the way in, or at least once it pushes the band wheel all the way onto the shaft, you take out the extended one and you put the normal bolt in. Okay, that's that. Time for the belt. Tension the engine back to where it should be, and then we'll put a blade on and we're good to go. All right, there we go. Surprisingly, that uh, belt is uh, quite a bit tighter than the old one, which makes sense. The old belts will uh, stretch out with time. So we'll get this tension to spec, and I just have to double check what that is, and uh, in the owner's manual, of course, and then we'll be good to go to put a blade on. You guys can see on my 2017 Woodland Mills HM130, there's that nut right there. It's connected to a bolt. The bolt comes underneath and then goes to this piece of piece of metal, this plate. This plate ultimately allows the engine, when I tighten and loosen that nut, to move left and right. That's what tensions the drive belt. So what I'm going to do in this case, I'm just going to tighten this up a little bit. I'm just going to tighten that up a little bit and then I'll go to the other side and check the belt. So because everyone's sawmill is different, because some of the newer models might have different tension, I'm not going to tell you the tension I'm setting this at, but I have checked it and it is to spec. So now I'm just going to tighten up the engine mounting bolts.
I'm just making sure the blade is where it's supposed to be in between the blade guides and making sure that it's lined up on the band wheels. I uh, don't have gloves on right now because what I'm doing is I'm reaching my hand in behind the band wheel, uh, sort of in two spots here, and I tend to do it right here. And I'm just, I'm just trying to feel whether the back of the blade is flush with the back of the band wheel. If it is on this band wheel as well as this band wheel, then I know it's approximately where it should be. And then I can go and start to tension the blade up to where, uh, where it should be and then circle it once and see if it uh, is in alignment. After tensioning the blade with the, uh, with the handle on my left, if the blade has tracked off, so it's uh, going forward or backwards, then I'll loosen off the tension. And uh, on the back here, I'll show you in a second, there's some adjustments. You can adjust that to get the tracking correct. But that's what I'm doing. Just going ahead and feeling where the blade is. It feels pretty good. So I'm going to go on the other side and tighten her up. And I'm just torquing this to 25 foot-pounds with this handle here. That's what I do for my 2017 model. Okay, there is 25 foot-pounds. And I'll just rotate it by hand, and I'm just watching the tracking. You guys will not. Oh, got some ice on the... Uh, hear that? I got some ice on the... Uh, what do you call that? Blade there. Anyways, I'm just watching closely here. So I'm making sure the blade doesn't drift forward. Or backwards and I can tell it's drifting forward on this so what I'll do and this is with my 2017 model I come back here and I adjust this bolt here and uh, here's my settings clockwise so on this bolt clockwise moves that blade towards the back I'm just gonna make a little adjustment here and then I think we're good to go and one thing I should mention here because we went ahead and replaced the bearings it is quite likely that the adjustment on this wheel will not work for getting the blade tracking correct. That happens to be the situation for, for me. So instead of just simply using this adjustment for blade tracking, which I would do 99% of the time, because I replaced the bearings, I'm gonna have to go ahead and do a little more in-depth blade tracking. And that's gonna involve these settings over here. Now this likely looks different than what you have if you don't have this uh, particular model, the sawmill. And so with that in mind, I am not going to take you through that whole process tonight. That'll be for another day. The best situation you can you can uh, come across is that you don't need to need to touch that far, far side. But in the event that you do, make sure you refer to your owner's manual. Because in my case, uh, the owner's manual is my best friend with all the steps listed out nice and clear. So that's what I'm up against. I'm going to tackle that, grab my owner's manual, fix up the blade tracking on that side, and then I'll be back in business. What you guys ended up seeing today was new bearings, a new belt, and a new blade. With that slight blade tracking fixed, I'll be back in business. I'll be cutting logs, and surely I'll be up to a new project. So guys, I appreciate you being here. If you're brand new, please subscribe, hit that like, and guys, for everyone, take care, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.